All right, this video is going to be uh, about how to prep slip, um, maintain our slip in our slip reservoir here, and then get it into our uh, little slip casting uh, distributor machine. Um, so basically, I'm just going to just kind of go over this equipment real quick, show you how to transfer slip into there, um, into this machine, which is where we're going to do most of our casting from, uh, and maintain good working slip in this. Uh, machine right here. Okay, um, so basically, uh, this this red, uh, big canister here has, is always full of slip. This is where we mix our our casting slip, and um, I usually try to keep this in you know relative working order. Um, usually, when you get slip from here and put it into here, sometimes you have to go uh, and refine your slip properties so that you can cast. Uh, what you're looking for um, successfully so there's definitely some variations there but anyways um, I don't keep a close eye on the slip in here I mostly just look at it and make sure that it's workable um, but uh, this is where we're, we're always going to keep it you can see I've got dry mix right here so usually what we'll do is we'll put water in here um, put our dry mix in um, add our deflocculants uh, just to get it moving okay um, but I do like to um, exercise the slip, so keep it working. If it sits in here for too long, it kind of gets really stiff and um, kind of jelly-like. So uh, usually when we're casting a lot, um, I usually just like to come in and uh, just turn this on. Um, just to make sure that it... You know, I'll make sure that uh, it's uh, mixing for a couple minutes, make sure everything stays loosened up. Uh, it just kind of helps uh, the whole process here. So um, so what I want to do, uh, I had this mix, I was mixing this for about 20 uh, minutes or so uh, to get it really loosened up. Um, and hopefully uh, it's not plugged up at the bottom here. Uh, I forgot to check for that, but we're just going to move forward, all right? So what I like to do is fill, whenever we're casting, um, I like to keep it in this machine right here, all right? And so this will fill up with slip and we'll do all of our casting and all that stuff here. Um, but in order to get it into here, uh, because we'll recycle some of the slip and some of the casting into this bin, I want to make sure that whatever slip is going in here is smooth and consistent. So I like to screen it first. All right. So what we can do is I'll just get a little bucket here, make sure it's clean, no plaster um, in there. And basically we can just um, fill this up. And uh, as you know, as this is pouring out, so there's a little valve right here. As this is pouring out. Um, you can sieve it and fill up the bucket. Once the bucket's full, um, throw, throw it into this machine. So uh, it'll probably take, you know, a good two to three buckets minimum um, to fill up this machine to become uh, really workable. All right, so uh, I'm just going to go through that process. Let's put you over here. Okay, so hopefully this will come pouring out. It's filling pretty easily right now, and so what I'll do is I'll just, you know, kind of just turn this on so that it flows kind of lightly, and you can just kind of keep it running and, you know, move this back and forth, and it'll sieve it pretty well. Uh, if you get a little too full, you can just turn off the valve, and uh, you should be good to go. This is actually looking pretty good, so... Um, might might not really need to screen it. I mean, there's not a whole lot of debris in it, but we're just going to put the muscle in anyway. And um, here we go. So I'll just turn this off, okay? And uh, can get a little faster with it. There we go. And then once I fill up my bucket, I will just dump it into the machine. 
All right, I want to make sure that I got a little water bucket next to me because uh, I really want to cut down on, you know, getting things dirty around here. Um, so uh, I usually just keep a little water bucket right there to clean, just transfer it. And then I will pour slip in here. Okay, and I want to make sure that I get all the dry stuff out. This has been sitting since last year. So um, I just want to make sure that nothing's dry that could clog it up. Um, I, I'll just use a spray bottle and get some of this kind of dried up stuff. Just kind of get it wet. Let that sit for a minute. Okay. And by the time I get some slip in there, man, that should, that should soften up. Okay, as I fill this up, I want to make sure that I at least cover the pump. See, that's the pump. And then there's a filter underneath it. And so it draws up all the material from underneath and then spits it out the hose here. See, right here. Whoops. Okay, and then out the hose. All right, so you want to always make sure that this little thing right here is always covered. If that is not, um, it will... Sh um, at, when you turn it on, you can see these little holes right there. It will shoot, slip out. They're like little jets to kind of, you know, mix everything up. If it's not properly full, they'll spray everywhere. So you always want to make sure that this is this level is maintained. So whenever you get too low, you just throw a fresh bucket of slip in there. All right. Okay, so I just filled it up. This is, you know, it's full enough. <laughs> you can fill it up even higher. Um... You know, and I, I sieve this slip like I was talking about. You don't always have to sieve your slip. Um, it's just a little extra precaution because we're, you know, recycling here. So it just takes a little bit of extra time. Um, I can also see here that the slip looks a little, uh, it's like really deflocculated. So you can see all the little clay par particles kind of, uh, you know, um, expelling themselves from each other so um anyways these are little things you can look for as soon as the slip gets in i haven't used this slip in quite a while so i um uh, i'm not really sure what's going to happen but it runs fine and uh it, it should be fine to pull a cast so no no need to get over excited about it um okay so once you get this ready i just want to show you this i'll turn the switch on see right here's a switch and uh, you can see it, it starts to mix things up. So every time you come in, you want to turn this machine on, all right? And you want to get this slip working. You also want to get, you know, maybe use a spatula around the sides and make sure that you're, you're incorporating all the slip in there um, so that it's mixing up really well, okay? And you can see how the jets are kind of moving it right here. So uh, this is about as... You know, I'd like it a little fuller, but, um, you know, we're, we're, we're good to go. So, all right. So now I want to cast my mold, and um, you can see I've got, I'm going to cast one of the Oya projects. Um, I haven't used this mold in a couple of months, so it's ultra dry. So what's going to happen is it's probably going to cast a lot faster. Um, once you start using your molds regularly, um, the cast times kind of get more consistent. Um, but you have to watch out for the fact that, you know, as you use them throughout the day, and if you use them over consecutive days, um, they will get saturated. So the, the, uh, the goal is um, try and get as many casts out of, you, out of them as you can in one day. Um, with this one, you know, I probably get like two or three out of this mold um, it, every day. Uh, and then what I do is I'll, I'll set it out, make sure that it's exposed to the air or maybe even put a fan on it so that it's, it's really dried out by the next day. And I can just keep on casting and casting, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, to move on to casting, you can see it's just a simple two-piece mold, uh, no big deal. Um, I've got my keys here, okay? So these are my one, two, three, four keys. And uh, I'm just going to stick this together. Now, one of the things that can happen to your mold is as you wear, uh, as you use them, they'll slowly deteriorate um, right at this seam right here. Sometimes you can um, get leaks or maybe you'll, you know, drop it and get a little chip or something and that will spring a leak. Uh, 
Uh, so that's why, you know, you know, your working molds will only last for so long and then you got to recast, okay? Um, you can solve that problem by uh, making a, a mother mold or a case mold where it's literally a mold of the working mold. Um, uh, or you can just, you know, cast your model again and again and again. So um, this mold should work for a while. You know, typically they'll, they'll last for a long time, um, but eventually they'll deteriorate. Uh, also, what makes the clay liquid, the deflocculant, that will also attack the mold as, and disintegrate it over time. So depending on what you're using, um, we use Darwin 7, uh, 11, Darwin 11. So that's actually one of the more moderate deflocculants as far as, um, you know, mold decomposition. Uh, some of, like, if you're using soda ash or sodium silicate or something that, they're a little bit more aggressive and your molds will deteriorate a little bit more. They'll start pitting and stuff on the inside. So, um, anyways, uh, we, you know, I should be able to use this mold for a pretty long time. All right, um, so what I want to do, I just, you know, I want to stick this together pretty much. Uh, and, um, you know, back to the leaks. If, if you do have leaks, sometimes you can just kind of plug it with some clay. Um, depending on how bad the leak is. Sometimes your mold really won't fit together very well after time. Um, and, you know, that, that's really the time when, hey, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta make a new mold. Um, but, you know, if you just have like a little leak or something, you, you know, you could just plug it with clay before you begin, or as you fill it up, if it starts dripping out or something, you just plug it up, it's no big deal. All right, now, um, there's a couple different ways to keep your mold together. Uh, we have these ratchet straps. Um, a lot of other people will use bungees. Um, regardless of what you're using, um, we'll be using these in here. Uh, so what I want to make sure, let me just loosen this again. There we go. Okay. One of the things that you want to prevent is having these... Uh, uh, the two little hooks um, get wrapped around a corner, all right? So you want to try and keep it on the flat side if you can. You don't want them wrapped around a corner. It can damage your mold. Um, you might crack it or something. The same is true with the ratchet side. So you definitely want to make sure, uh, you know, that you're, uh, you're keeping these things uh, as, you know, protecting your mold as you wrap it up because I, I wrap this pretty tight. And, you know, depending on the size of the mold, um, let's just do it one more time. Yeah, I like mine really tight. But depending on the size of the mold, you might need a couple of these, okay? All right, so the next step is going to be uh, to just fill this up. Now, one of the things I want um, you to do is you need to take, uh, have a journal and take casting notes. Um, it's just really important to keep casting notes, casting notes. So what you'll do is you'll document the time uh, that you left the cast in the mold before you dump it out. Um, and then you can measure, you'll gauge the thickness of the cast, okay? Um, and those types of numbers will help you, um, you know, improve your efficiency with the casting process, but also um, some of those numbers can really help you understand how the slip is <laughs> uh, and how it's behaving. Um, and so you can, you know, compare notes. The other thing, too, is that if you're casting a lot of different objects, sometimes, you know, you, you need to refer to those notes. You know, if, if you take a break um, for a long time between casting these objects, you can kind of forget, you know, the sweet spot for it to work properly or to cast properly. So it's always good to be able to go back to your notes. Um, and what you'll also do is you'll take um, calibration measurements of the slip. Uh, that can also offer uh, some, you know, important, you know, data <laughs> as far as, you know, whether or not you need to cast. This is a really simple cast. I'm not too worried about it. The slip looks fine, you know. I, I don't think we have to go overboard on the science here, um, but there's definitely, um, strategies that if you are taking data, it is really important, um, especially if you're trying to problem solve if you're having trouble with casting. So, 
anyways, uh, the easiest thing to do for a cast, um, I'll just, um, okay, I got my machine here, and uh, I've got these, these little three bars, okay, um, and I'll place these in, and I'll set my mold on top. <laughs> Uh, if I recall from my mold notes, um, I believe this cast is best at about 40 minutes. Um, so I'm going to leave it in here. Um, you know, I want it to be a little bit on the thicker side. Some casts, you know, will go for 20 minutes, depending on what you're casting. Uh, you know, some casts will need like 60 minutes or 90 minutes if you're casting something really big. Um, again, you know, you, you kind of have to troubleshoot, so you're going to have to just start casting, taking notes, seeing how things are, making observations, and then, you know, make adjustments from there. All right? So, for now, uh, I'm just going to leave this in the mold for 40 minutes, and I do a time check right now, and um, if I just turn the pump on, this is a, a real luxury item, and so I'm just going to piece the little thing here and fill up my mold. Alright. And I'll fill up the overflow spout. Okay, and there we go. Um, usually what I like to do is I, I, I like to keep the, um, the nozzle out of the slip. Uh, I don't like slip building up in it. And I'll also um, I'll also just tap this to make sure there aren't any air, bubble, uh, air bubbles. And because I haven't used this mold in a while, I'm just going to check it out and make sure that I don't have any leaks. I'm good. Um, the other thing, too, is I'll come back in like maybe 15 minutes and check my reservoir here. Because if my, this mold's going to be really dry, so it's going to absorb the clay really quick. In fact, I, I don't even know if I, it'll make 40 minutes. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but anyways... Um, I want to come back and make sure that I fill up my reservoir so that my cast doesn't, you know, so that my slip line doesn't go, go below my necessary cast line. Okay, so that's why these little overflow reservoirs are really important to incorporate in your mold. Okay, uh, I'll see you in 40 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 40 minutes, and um, I just did like a little test cut. Um, here, let me show you. So if I take this little knife, right, and I can just kind of cut right down into where the cast is, I can get a sense for how thick it is. So, you know, usually for this, I'd like it just a little bit thicker, but uh, if that's the case, then I would just leave it in. But I, I, I'm just going to flip it over and uh, drain this mold out so I can keep this process going. All right, you can see I just flipped it over and it's just draining out. And uh, I'll just leave it flipped over, you know, for, for a little while. I mean, you could probably leave it flipped over the whole time. Um, if I recall, uh, I probably leave this flipped over for, you know, like maybe five, ten minutes or something, just to make sure that everything kind of runs out of it. And, um, yeah, then in about five, ten minutes, I'll flip it back over, and then I'll let it sit and let the cast inside stiffen up, and then I'll separate it. Um, I have to refer to my notes, but if I recall, I think I need about an hour or so of stiff time. Um, but what you can do is you can... Uh, come back and check it and just feel the inside of the cast um, in the little pore spout hole. Uh, you just stick your finger in there and get a sense for it. So if it starts to get pretty stiff, then then you can pull it out. Okay, so um, I let this mold sit for a little too long, uh, a little bit more than an hour. I, I probably could have pulled it out, honestly, in like 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> Not really sure. Uh, this is the first cast in a while, so I definitely want to be careful. And what I know is I, I want to just kind of undo the ratchet, okay, 
You don't want your mold to just fall apart. Sometimes they do and you get lucky, but my particular cast has these like little appendages that if the mold just kind of collapses apart, it could break them. So I want to be careful with how I separate it. Um, and so what I can do is, all right, and it wants to come apart. So it's, this is going to release pretty well. And I'll just kind of come straight out. Okay, and then I'll pick out my vessel shape. Yay! Okay, very carefully. All right, and you can see I've got all these, like, you know, this is an old mold, so, you know, the seam lines are starting to um, uh, be, be more prominent. So, you know, I just want to spend some time cleaning this stuff up. Um, you definitely, you know, want to consider you know, how the construction of your mold will affect these types of um, uh, outcomes. I mean, you're always going to have a mold seam. It's just part of the gig. Um, what you have to decide on is how you clean them up or perhaps incorporate them into your design somehow. Um, there's a lot of people who like to um, keep their mold seams. There's a lot of people who don't. <laughs> so it's kind of a personal decision. Um, I want to clean mine up. Now, this is a little bit soft, okay? It's kind of collapsing on me a little bit. So typically what I'd want to do is let this um, stiffen up. Um, you know, almost to leather hard, probably not quite, but, you know, something stiffer than this for sure. Um, it's a little bit wobbly. The other thing that uh, you want to pay attention to are these, like, little holes and things. If you don't get all the air bubbles out during your cast, sometimes people will like shake their mold first and get like a really nice coat around the entire interior of the mold and then fill it up. Um, you know, for me, this is something that's going to go underground, <laughs> so I don't necessarily care. Uh, I just, I'm trying to get these done. So anyways, um, I, I can also use like a blue wheel. I could use a sponge. You know, so if I had a wet sponge here, all right, um, I could just kind of smooth out these seam lines a little bit, make them, make them a little bit nicer. You know, uh, again, depending on what you're doing, what your design is, um, you know, the seam lines might not be that big of a deal. For these, it's not that big of a deal. I do want them clean, though. Um, you know, if you're making functional wear, you're probably going to want to um, have something that's pretty clean and think about how your seam line engages with your design. Um, so anyway, so there we go. We'll just clean that up a little bit. And uh, then what I would want to do is I would prep my mold. Okay, if I was going to do a cast again, I would just kind of clean, clean out my mold, um, clean out these areas, see where I have a little bit of debris there. All right, and then I would just stick it right back together. Um, fill it up, cast a new one, do the whole process over again, okay? So that's casting in a nutshell, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, good luck casting. Yeehaw.